Hi, my name is Diogo and I'll be presenting our paper Human AI Collaboration in Decision Making Beyond Learning to Defer. AI is now fast, it is scalable, and in several domains it's become quite accurate, so for instance in finance and in healthcare. However, humans do retain the upper hand in that they're able to learn fast, accrue experience, and they often have access to exclusive information, so that could be sensitive information or information that cannot be easily translated to machines. So because of that, because they have different strengths, human AI collaboration really has the potential to outperform humans and AI in isolation by promoting synergistic teaming between the two. In decision making, the chief challenge to make such a system work is to determine who should decide in each case. The easiest way to do this is through confidence-based deferral. Essentially, we just have the model score every instance, and instances of high model uncertainty are deferred to humans. Nevertheless, Madras and others in 2018 argued that optimal deferral doesn't just depend on the model, but also on human performance. Just because an instance has high model uncertainty doesn't mean that humans will not be equally as uncertain, in which case it's really not worth it to defer that instance. With this in mind, they proposed learning to the fur, a supervised method that jointly trains the, the main classifier and the assignment system in order to optimize for performance and optionally fairness. This is done through this custom loss function. Here, S is the probability of the furl. So what this loss means is one minus S, the probability that it will be an automatic decision times the loss of the main classifier, plus S, the probability that it will be a decision done by a human times the 0-1 loss that humans incurred in, uh, in the past, and then just a penalty term to disincentivize uh, deferral as it is more costly. Several other authors have since contributed to this framework, namely Mozart and Sontag in 2020, Kaswani and others in 2021, and Hemmer and others and Verma and Alice Sneek in 2022. However, we believe that learning to defer has several uh, limitations and unaddressed challenge that challenges that really inhibit its adoption in practice. We'll go over how it deals with missing human predictions, joint learning, multiple human decision makers and capacity management, the selective labels problem, promoting fairness, and lastly, dynamic environments. Starting with missing human predictions. Learning to the fur requires human predictions for every instance in the training set. This is really a tall order and it will, be, and it will often be unfeasible as the burden of decision making may already be shared uh, with AI. So for instance, if we have a fraud detection system where we have a fraud model deferring to humans in cases of high uncertainty following confidence-based deferral, when we look at past data, we will not have human predictions for every instance in the training set. In fact, if the AI is reviewing most instances, we will not have uh, human predictions for most instances in the training set. So it will be really infeasible uh, to, to get those in, and costly to get those. Imputation schemes have been uh, suggested. However, they are not really valid unless the assignment system is random. And that will rarely be the case because confidence-based deferral does have substantial gains over random deferral. Now regarding joint learning. Link to the FERP proposes to jointly train the main classifier and the assignment system. And this really has an obvious benefit, which is that the main classifier can focus on the instances that the humans cannot solve. Uh, Mozart and Sontag show us uh, this figure here that really illustrates this well. We can see that the linear classifier is able to fit to those points uh, on the left uh, in blue, uh, whereas humans decide on the points on the right. And so because the, the classifier can ignore the points in red, it is able to fit better to the points on the left. However, there are two main drawbacks associated with joint learning. The first, in cases where humans are advised uh, by AI, this role that the AI may have will be rendered useless. Um, and this is because we can think, for instance, if, if, the, if we have a fraud model that is showing its score to analysts when the decision is deferred, it will not, that score will really not be um, useful if it was not trained in the instances that are being deferred. And that will precisely be the case if we are employing joint learning, as that, that is really the goal of joint learning. A similar problem happens if humans become temporarily or partially unavailable. Uh, if that happens, the AI will not be able to substitute them as it was not trained and purposely not trained in those areas. If we go back to uh, the, the, that same figure, we can see that the classifier was fit just on the points on the left. So it will not be able to provide any good prediction on the points on the right. In fact, it will always predict a circle, presumably here, 
Um, whereas if it had been trained on those points as well, it probably could have done a better job also if it was not a linear classifier. Now regarding multiple human decision makers and capacity management. Uh, learning to defer initially was uh, thought of for a single expert setting, but Kesswani and others and Hammer and others have uh, extended it to multiple experts. And the reason for this, they, they argue, is that humans may be diverse in their expertise or degree of expertise. And so it's worth, worth it to really model them individually so as to get optimal assignments. However, their extensions come with a big drawback, which is that they now require human predictions for every, uh, from every human for every instance. Again, this will often be unfeasible. Uh, if we think, for instance, uh, of performative use cases, uh, having more than one human review each instance is quite inefficient. We would prob probably rather have a single human review each instance for uh, more instances, presumably improving uh, performance. Again, imputation schemes have been proposed, but generalization may falter if the assignments were not random. So there's that problem. Regarding capacity management, learning to defer just aims to find the best decision maker. That's the goal uh, of the system, be it human or AI. However, it does not consider that humans may have limited capacity, so a decision maker may actually not be um, available. Uh, if we think of a team of fraud analysts working, let's say, eight hours per day, they will only be able to review uh, N cases, not more and um, not, not less, of course. However, learning to defer will probably just repeatedly assign instances to the best decision makers, to the decision makers it considers best, uh, and it will not consider that their capacity is limited. Uh, will not really manage the team well. It will not propose an actionable policy. The true optimization problem in these types of settings is really to find the best set of assignments given the capacity constraints in the set of cases. It's not to find the best assignment for each individual case in isolation. Now regarding se the selective labels problem. The selective labels problem originates from decision-making processes where the, the predictions themselves actually influence the outcomes that are trying to be uh, predicted. And this is more easily understood through examples. So, for instance, with bail decisions in the context of criminal justice, if bail is not grant, granted, then the defendant cannot really recidivate or fail to appear in court, both being positive labels. So essentially, when the prediction is positive, then the outcomes will not be observable, whether it was a true positive or a false positive. The, a similar thing happens with lending decisions. If a bank rejects a loan, then they will never know if that client would have actually defaulted on that, on that loan. And in credit card fraud detection, something also similar uh, occurs where purchases are, purchases are usually considered legitimate by maturity. So essentially when a customer does not complain, when there is no chargeback request. So if a purchase is declined, this natural process will not occur and the label will not be known. Link to the fur cannot deal with the labels that um, come from these types of uh, processes. And there are some alternatives, but they require changes of angles or additional uh, assumptions. And we, we go into further detail uh, on this on, on our paper. Regarding fairness, machine learning models are known to be capable of bias against protected groups, and so, so are humans. As such, considering these specific biases of humans and AI really allows the collaboration system to mitigate unfairness. Uh, on the contrary, failing to consider those biases may actually lead to an aggravation of unfairness, as was shown by Jones and others in the context of learning with uh, rejection. And so as such, fairness in human collaboration really is both an opportunity, uh, but also a threat. And because of that, it should always be kept at the forefront uh, of research. Lastly, regarding dynamic environments. There are several non stationary factors that are known to render machine learning models obsolete. Uh, so that could be concept drift, where the data shifts, the distribution of the data shifts throughout time. Uh, there's also adversary classif classification, where the prediction target is adapting to the policies we implement. And performative prediction, where the predictive decisions actually affect the outcome that we're trying to predict. All of this will uh, inherently affect human AI collaboration systems employing machine learning. But uh, human AI collaboration really, will really add a new layer of non stationarity as it deals with humans. So we may have changes in human behavior due to exogenous factors. That could be new instructions, lessons learned, etc. But humans may also adapt to the system itself. So the system will actually force a new data distribution upon humans. And the way that they react to this may be unexpected. 
As such, systems must be updatable with new data so, so, uh, so to keep up uh, with, with uh, these dynamic environments. Learning to defer is not updatable since it requires human predictions for every instance in the training set, as previously mentioned. Um, and so because of that, when we look at past data uh, where there was a human AI collaboration system in place, even if it was produced by a learning to the first solution, it will be lacking human predictions as the burden uh, of decision making is already shared with AI. So learning to the first will not be able to, to update that solution and it will not be able to update itself even. That's it for uh, the limitations and challenges. I'd just like to leave some final remarks. We know that human acceleration has the potential to improve performance, and we know that confidence-based deferral is suboptimal. It just does not consider human performance. Learning to defer addresses this, this issue, but it comes with structural limitations and really leaves unaddressed challenges. Our goal here is to motivate research towards building a human acceleration system that learns to optimize performance and fairness from just the available data while managing existing capacity constraints and keeping up with dynamic environments. Thank you.